First Samuel chapter 10. Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, Is it not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance? So now the servant's going off. Samuel's had the, the, the vial of oil and he anoints as they would the high priest with oil on the head dumped down. That's how the kings from King Saul would be when they say the anointing. The high priest and the king are anointed. Jesus Christ, our great high priest, Jesus Christ, the king of the Jew, is anointed. And that's what Christ means. Christ means the anointed one. Uh, chapter 16, verse 13. Chapter 16, verse 13. About David. In 1613, Samuel took the horn of oil. So horn and vial is the same thing. Holds the oil. It's an old horn of a, of a ram. Hollowed out with a calf. And anointed him in the midst of his brethren. Psalms 89, 20. 89, 35. 132, verse 11. That's Jesus Christ. Amongst the brethren, the Jews. Saul was alone. And the Spirit of the Lord came upon David. We'll see that in a minute with Saul. Instantaneously, the Spirit came upon David. The Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Remoth. That's his home. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. An evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. So Saul had the Holy Spirit. We'll see when we study this chapter. But it leaves him. And it goes to David. And unlike today, the church age, if you got the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, it could not stay or may not stay. So in chapter 10, again, verse 1, Then Samuel took a vial of oil and poured it upon his head and kissed him and said, It is not because the Lord has anointed thee to be captain over his inheritance. And it's just Samuel and Saul together. When they had departed from me from me today, then thou shalt find two men by Rachel's sceptre in the border of Benjamin, as Zila, Zilda. All right, so this is where Rachel dies, the city of her final son, her second son, where she dies in birth in Benjamin. That's the tribe of uh, Saul. And they will say unto thee, The asses which thou went to seek are found. Alright, so when he gets to this place by Rachel's sceptre, there are going to be men who are going to come up to him and say, Hey, you know, the asses have been found. And lo, thy father has left care of the asses. Now that's the first time that word care shows up. And again, if you look at chapter 9, verse 5, Saul says, at least my father leave caring for the asses. That's the only time caring shows up in the Bible. And so when you see the first time word care shows up in the Bible, it has to do with a father over a son who went out looking for asses. Now, we talked about last night that Saul is a herder of asses. David is a shepherd of the sheep. You realize the law said if you're to redeem a lamb with, with uh, redeem an ass with a lamb, and if you will not redeem that ass, you're to break its neck and kill it. That ass pictures an unsaved man that's not doing right. That sheep represents the children of Israel with the shepherd over them, David, a type of Christ. So it's funny how this care shows up, and it's Saul's dad. Alright, I don't care about the asses no more. Where's my son? Care for the asses. And sorrow is for you, saying, What shall I do for my son? What happens to my son? Now, Samuel is still prophesying. This hasn't happened yet. Then thou shalt go on forward from thence. 
And thou shalt come up to the plain of Tabor, and there shall meet thee three men going up to God to Bethel. One carrying three kids, goats, another carrying three loaves of bread, and another carrying a bottle of wine. The Lord's Supper. Wine and bread, right there. Isn't that interesting? My body and my blood. What about the kids? I don't know. Something in that. Three, three, and a bottle of wine. I wonder why that other guy wasn't carrying three bottles of wine. And they will salute thee. Oh, carrying is the first time that shows up in verse 3. One carrying three kids. That's the first time that word shows up. And in verse 4, they will salute thee. That's the first time that word shows up. And that's not, you know, oh, oh. that's, hey, how you doing? Nice to see you, Saul. Been a while. It's a greeting. And give thee two loaves of bread, which thou shalt receive of their hand. Here's some food. Remember, he spent all his food on the journey. He had a meal with Samuel, but they didn't give him leftovers. So on the way home, in case he gets hungry, here's two loaves of bread. After that, thou shalt come to the hill of God. Where garrison, that's the first time that shows up. And that could be a military group. That could be a fortress of a military group. That can be an armory. It's based upon a military. Whether men, horses, chariots, ammunition. It's a group. A garrison of the Philistines. And it shall come to pass, when thou art come thither to the city, that thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place. Now this high place, this is before Jerusalem set up. These high places were a place where you met God. But later on they became high places for gods. Now notice how the very detailed this prophecy is of Samuel to Saul. It's not like, you know, a fortune cookie. You're going to find good favor today. What favor? Well, I can't tell you that. Well, you're going to find three kids, one guy carrying three kids, one guy carrying a loaf, three loaves of bread, one guy carrying a bottle of water. You're going to come up, they're going to give you two loaves of bread. And then as you go to this place, you're going to meet this man. As you go to this place, you're going to meet this man. And this is what the men are going to say to you. This is what this man is going to say to you. This is what's going to happen. This is beyond your one nine hundred. Uh, psychic hotline. This is someone that if you go inside a tent at a flea market, they can't tell you this much detail. And we're going to see a sign. What's the sign? Saul is a Jew, and the Bible says Jews require a sign. This has never happened in Israel. There has never been a man anointed by God for a king. So as Saul goes back home, is this for real? I mean, am I dreaming? Everything that happened. Oh, okay, this has happened. This has happened. Samuel said this would happen. It did happen. I guess it's real. I guess it's of God. Thou shalt meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place with a Psaltery, first time that shows up. I mean, a guy they're not carrying a guitar, a drum set, no, a tabret, and a pipe. That's the first time that shows up. That would be like a flute. You blow into it, make musical instrument, and a harp. So the prophets, I don't know how many there are. You can't say there's four, like there's three wise men because there are three gifts. We don't know how many prophets. One's carrying a sultry, one's carrying a tabret, one's carrying a pipe, and one's carrying a harp. So when Saul meets these men, what are they carrying? A sultry, a tabret, a pipe, and a harp. Very detailed. Before them, and they shall prophesy, tell the future. 
Here we go. Now, he goes on his journey. He's on his way home. He passes Rachel's septic. He comes across these three men with kids, bread, and wine. Gets a loaf of bread. He goes before the field, the, the hill of God. He passes the hill seat, the, the garrison of Philistine. He meets these prophets. A little bit of time. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. David in chapter 16, verse 13 and 14, it came right on him at that moment. He was anointed. And then when he's anointed, this spirit of God here leaves Saul. Now Saul has done many wicked things. In the Old Testament, the spirit will leave and you can die while being graceful by God. You can die in your sins in the Old Testament and lose it. Unlike somebody who's saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, you can't lose it. But that's uh, we'll talk about that later. The Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them. Okay, now Samuel was a judge, a prophet, and a priest. Saul is a king. <coughs> Excuse me, a prophet. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll see a little bit later in this chapter. But he's never a priest. And he's going to enter the priesthood later in his life. Lord willing, we get there. And Samuel, says, by God, says, I'm done with it. That's it. Close the door and go find Jesse and his son. You've got to mark in the Bible as we go through the Bible up to Jesus Christ. The three offices. Prophet, priest, and king, which Jesus Christ holds all three. Samuel was never a king. Saul was never a prophet. I mean, excuse me, a priest. David was both prophet, king, and priest. He foretold the future all through the book of Psalms about Jesus and his suffering. He was a king of Israel. And he was allowed to eat the showbread, which was not to be eaten. And you will find David giving offerings to God. And nothing of leprosy or anything happens to him. So, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee, and thou shalt prophesy with them, and shall be turned into another man. Now, let's see what the New Testament for a Christian, Ephesians 1.13. Now, this is not Saul, but this is us. Ephesians 1.13. And the Bible speaks about a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, I make all things new. And in Ephesians 1.13, in whom ye trusted, that's me, after that ye have heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after that ye have believed, ye were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. That did not happen to Saul. He was not sealed. We go from chapter 10, receiving the Holy Spirit, to chapter 16, losing the Holy Spirit. That does not happen with us. A new creature in Christ, the Bible calls us. In verse 7, let it be. When these signs... There it is. Everything from verse 2 down to verse 6 is to a Jew. And Jews require a son. And let it to be when these signs are come unto thee. That thou... Do as occasion serve thee, for God is with thee. So Saul starts out right, and he'll blow it. And almost like with Judas. Judas started out right, but as the close of Jesus' ministry, he blows it. And thou shalt go down before me to Gilgal. You're going to meet with him. Behold, I will come down unto thee, 
to offer burnt offerings and to sacrifice sacrifice of peace offerings. Seven days thou shalt tarry. I'll come to thee and show thee what to do. When he sets a date, we're going to meet. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, he leaves Samuel. God gave him another heart. <laughs> He's changed. And all those signs came to pass that day. So later on that day, he gets the spirit of the Lord. Hours. David got it right, right after he was anointed. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him. That was back in verse 5. And the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. So there he is. He's a prophet and a king. And it came to pass, when all that knew him before time saw that, Behold, he prophesied among the prophets, Saul. Then the people said one to another, What is this that is come up unto the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? Uh, Kish's son, Saul, has never been with prophets. He's never prophesied before. What's going on? Something weird about this guy now. And this is like when someone gets saved and their family looks at you. What are you doing reading your Bible? What are you doing going to church? What are you doing giving your money to a missionary? What are you doing not coming to the bar? What are you doing not doing this no more? What are you doing? Your life is changed. It's supposed to be changed. And one of the same place answered and said, But who is, who is their father? Therefore it became a proverb. Is Saul also among the prophets? So they're like, they're making proverbs and about Saul and his new life. People have taken notice. And when a Christian gets saved and is newborn, has a new creature and a new outlook on life, people are supposed to look at you and say, something is different. And James says, after salvation, your works are to show that you love Christ. And when he had made an end of prophesying, he came to the high place. And Saul's uncle said unto him, and to his servant, the servants rejoined him, whither went we? He said, to seek the asses. And when we saw that there were none, there, they were nowhere, we came to Samuel. And Saul's uncle said, Tell me, I pray thee, what Samuel say unto you? And Saul said unto his uncle, He told us plainly that the asses were found true. But of the matter of the kingdom whereof Samuel spake, verses 1 to 8, he told him not. Now Samuel has been faithful to the word of God, expressing and telling and proclaiming the word of God as God has told him. And when he spoke to Saul about the king, about him being king, that came from God. So when his uncle shows up, he says, Saul, well, what does Samuel say? Well, he said he asked for found. Saul never says anything about what God said about the kingdom. Whatever God said, Saul said, not, not going to say no. Why not? And Samuel called the people together unto the Lord to Mizpah. This is some time. And said unto the children of Israel, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel. Here comes history again. I brought up Israel out of Egypt, true, and delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians, true, and out of the hand of all kingdoms, true, Moses and Joshua, and of them that oppressed you, judges, Moses, Joshua, and the judges, there they are, ye have this day rejected your God. 
Well, look at that. Samuel doesn't soft soap anything. This is what God's done for you. Yay, all right. Yeah, God, thank you very much. You rejected God. Ooh. Who himself saved you of all your adversaries. First time that word shows up. And your tribulation is the first time that word shows up. Adversary and tribulation shows up in the same verse. Talking about Israel rejecting God. Man, that's not a, a place for the great tribulation, Jacob's trouble. What is? And not ab adversary, adversaries. And ye have said unto him, God. A couple chapters back, nay. But set a king over us. So asking for a king was rejecting God. I wonder if every four years when we ask for a president, if we're rejecting God. We're supposed to be a Christian nation. Why don't we the next time we're supposed to vote for a president, why don't we get together as a Christian nation, one nation under God and say, God, we're not going to vote for no man. We want you to control this nation. We want you to drive out the adversary. We want you to drive out the wickedness. We want you to reign. Well, we can't reign because we don't have a king. We officially call the office of this country president because we didn't want to be like England under a king. And yet the Bible speaks about a king. In the millennium, there will be a king. King of kings and lord of lords. This nation will never ask God to be the leader. Nay, but set a king over us. Now therefore present yourselves before the Lord by your tribes and by your, th and by your thousand. Okay. All Judah over here. All Simeon over here. All Reuben over here. All Levi over here. Benjamin here. And when Samuel had caused all the tribes of Israel to come near, the tribe of Benjamin was taken. All right. One out of twelve. Benjamin stepped forward. That's a lot of people. He's not calling out a hundred people. He's calling out thousands of people. Amongst thousands of thousands of people. You ever wonder how they kept those ranks? <laughs> Twelve tribes. And they are all by their family. And he looks into that crowd and says, Benjamin. Everybody else? Move to the left, move to the right. I don't know how he did it. But I just want Benjamin. You know what else has happened in the Bible? This is Joshua with Achan. He said, I want all the tribes here. And I forget how, what tribe he was and all that. And then the tribe. Now watch. All right, we got the tribe. When he had caused the tribe of Benjamin to come near by their family. Now the families. That's what happened with Achan. Now Achan is in trouble. But here is not trouble. This is good. So... Tribe of Benjamin, okay, all you families split up amongst your family. Really? And the family of Matar, Matri, Matri, was taken. And Saul, the son of Kish, was taken. And when they sought him, he could not be found. Now look at that. Divide the family. And Saul was taken. How could he be taken if he wasn't even there? He's not there. Hi, Kish. Hi. Where's your son? Shall we go back to chapter 16 again? Isn't this just parallel? Chapter 16. And where do we want to go with this? Verse 8. 16, 8. Now, 16, 6. Uh, yes, yeah, 6. 16.6 And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Elah and said, Surely the Lord's anointed before he. Now this is the sons of Jesse. The Lord said to Samuel, Look not on his countenance or the height of his stature. You remember Saul? He was the high one. He was the tall one. Oh, it's got to be this guy. Uh, we did that before, Saul. I mean, Samuel. No. I'm not doing that again. Because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth 
not as a man see it. For the, Lord, for the man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. We already did that with Saul. Everybody, ooh, ah, Saul. All right, this time I'm going to choose the man. And we're going to look on the heart. And Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, neither has the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shema to pass by. He said, neither has the Lord chosen this. Called them this. Oh, you don't know your English. That's because it's Hebrew. And Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen thee. And Samuel said to Jesse, are here all thy children? Where's Saul? Where's, where's the missing Saul? And he said, there remains yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. When Samuel comes and God chooses David, David is doing his job. David is not there like Saul is not there. Where is Saul? He's going to be hiding. Where is David? You got any more children? Yeah, I got one more. Where is he? He's out taking care of the sheep. He hasn't lost his sheep. What is Saul doing? He lost his sheep. I mean, he lost his asses. What a parallel between these two men. That Antichrist is going to be so much like Jesus Christ that the end of the seven years, they're not even going to know who Jesus Christ is. According to Revelation 19. So, and when they saw him, they couldn't, he could not be found back in chapter 10. When they sought the king amongst Jesse's son, David was not to be found. Therefore they inquired of the Lord further. Samuel asked Jesse, you got any other son? If David's a type of Jesus Christ, Jesse's a type of God the Father. Samuel asked the Lord, okay, where is he? Samuel asked Jesse, okay, where is he? Where is he? Uh, therefore they inquired the Lord, if the man should yet come hither. And the Lord answered, Behold, he has hid himself amongst the stuff. He's hiding over there. He's playing hide and go see. David walks right up and says, Hi. Yep, that's the one. Anoint him. And they ran and fetched him thence. And when he was stood among the people, he was higher than any of the people from his shoulders and upward. He's tall like that son of Jesse. That God's like, uh-uh, not doing this again. He's a tall Jew. And Samuel said to all the people, See him? Man looketh on the outward appearance. Whom the Lord has chosen. That there is none like him among all the people. Well, Jesse had a tall son. And all the people shouted and said, God save the king. That's what England chants. But they can't say the king, they got to say the queen, because there hasn't been a king. And they shout today, God save the queen. And Samuel told the people, that's out of the Bible. I think they even have a hymn, God Save the King, which I believe, I think they sing it to the Queen now. It's in the Bible. And Samuel told the people the manner of the kingdom. This is what it's going to be. The second time, before he told them, you know, he's going to tax you, he's going to draft you, he's going to inlet domain you. Told them the manner of the kingdom and wrote it in a book. You mean chapter 8? He rehearsed chapter 8 and then he wrote it. Chapter 8 is in the handwriting of Samuel. That's what he said. Then it was written. Well, man wrote the Bible. Yeah, Samuel said it. Then he said it again and he wrote it. In Jeremiah, they take the word of God and they burn it and cut it up. And God says, take a piece of paper. Let's write this down and add a few things more to it. 
and laid it up before the Lord. And probably the ark. And Samuel sent all the people away, every man to his house. All right. Congregation gone. Time to go home. And Saul also went home to Gidna. Judges 19.16. Judges 19.16. You didn't think this was going to come up, did you? You thought we were done with Judges. He goes home to Gidna. In Judges 19, 16, Behold, there came an old man from his work out of the field at even, which was also of Mount Ephraim. And he sojourned in Gidna. Gidna. But the men of the place were Benjaminites. This is where the whole mess started. That Benjamin is lacking because they protected the Sodomites. The hometown of Kish and of Saul, King Saul, was where a bunch of Sodomites ran around the house just like the story of Sodom and Gomorrah. And when the nation of Israel came together, like Samuel just called them together, the entire people of Israel, it was only the elders that came in chapter 20. They said, give us those men. They said, no, we're going to protect them. And then you had the civil war. And so also went home to Gidna. And there met with him a band of men whose hearts God had touched. So he's got God on his side. God sent in men touched by God. But the children of Belial, that's the wicked class, perverted, sinners, wicked. Uh, Judges 19. I think it's in there somewhere. In Judges 19. 1923. 1923. In 1923. 22. 22. Now as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, he set the house round about and beat at the door and spake to the master of the house, the old man, saying, Bring forth the men that came un into thy house that we may know him. And But the children of Belial said, How shall this man save us? You know, because he hid himself, verse 22. He's, a, he's not going to save us. He's a coward. And they despised him. And brought him no presents. But he held his peace. That would be Saul held his peace. Right. It won't be like that. Don't bother me. I'm going home. Next chapter. Be assigned to Israel that Saul is the king. But he blows it. <laughs>